Hey there viewers, Eric O here, South Main Auto. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. Got a little different video today. We're out working in the parking lot. Got this camper here that got dropped off. It's a late by Skyline. I don't know if it makes a difference. I think they all come from Indiana out of the same sweatshop. So the customer added into a another facility for inspection and they told him that he needs new brakes all the way around and needs his wheel bearings packed but he didn't like their price so he brought it here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that job for him so we're gonna first thing we need to do is because we don't really know what it is we need to jack it up and, and take a wheel off see what uh, what kind of axle it has I assume it's probably a Dexter axle or an Alco or something like that but we need to measure the brakes see if we get some new brake assemblies I'm gonna show you how to change those Weather's pretty crappy outside, so hope we can at least figure out what this thing needs before the rain flies again. So I see here on the drum it does say Dexter, so I would assume it is a Dexter axle. Uh, we just need to measure the brake drums now and see uh, see what size they are. So we're just going to take and pull this cap off. Get underneath. Yeah, get under that side. And then we're going to take and pull this cotter pin out. I'm starting to feel sprinkles. So we got to work fast. We'll get that out. We'll take this nut off. And Usually these aren't much more than finger tight, so you usually don't need the appropriate size socket. So what I like to do, so the brakes aren't, uh, aren't adjusted up real tight, so this will slide off. So typically, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you on this one. I'll put the nut back on if it'll slide through that inner race, which I don't know if it will on this one. No, no, it's not gonna work. A lot of times you can put that nut back on there and that'll aid in taking the inner bearing and seal out. Because what you'll do is you'll pull it out about halfway, let this drop down and then just bang it out. So it'll actually hit that seal and bearing right out on you. Uh, well, it looks like he's got plenty of shoe, but it is, that's what they stated to him. I'll show you what they were telling him. So this is the forward-facing shoe. Well, basically they were telling him that they were cracked and uh, needed to be replaced. So you can see there, I mean, yes, they are cracked. I used to work in a truck shop, did a lot of, a lot of work on trailer brakes, electric trailer brakes, you know, tractor trailer brakes, all kinds of drums. That's pretty common. Um, I usually don't get too excited about it until they crack and extend to the edge of the edge of the shoe. But uh, he wants some change, so we're gonna change him. Uh, you know, it's not gonna it's probably not gonna hurt anything. He's gonna kind of know where he's at, uh, brake wise. And I don't know, maybe you guys don't know how these work, so I'll just uh, kind of explain that a little bit here. So I'll kind of give you the simple explanation as to how these work. So it's basically your typical brake shoes except these brakes are electronically activated. So you've got this electromagnet here, which is another part of the wear item of these brakes. And you can see inside the drum, you know, your, your brake shoes hit the actual, you know, surface as we would think of a, of a common, you know, brake drum. And then your electromagnet actually hits this surface right here. So when your uh, brakes are applied inside the truck and you've got a brake controller in there, the brake controller will send power to these electromagnets depending on how you have it set how much power it sends to it and how powerful the magnet is that magnet will then come out and adhere to the brake drum here the the face here that's shiny and you know if we're traveling in a forward direction you know this always this has a spring on it so this has constant tension against the uh, brake drum so when the magnets activated it'll adhere to the drum or magnetize itself to the drum creating more friction swinging this arm and you can see it activates the brake both in the forward direction and the rearward direction. 
so that's pretty much the simple method that this works so it's uh you know pretty much like a standard brake system except there's really no equalization between the shoes you know there's no park and brake to deal with um, and you have one more wear item you have the magnet which is is a wear item on this the magnet wears as well as the shoes so that's uh about as simple as i can explain it so right now what I'm doing is before I pull any of the seals out, I just want to see what uh, what seal this is, see if we can just get a seal number off from it. If not, we'll just have to see if we can identify the axle. It's got tags on them, we can find out what they are hopefully, but it's always best just to have a number, and I've got one right here on this lip of this seal. And it says Taiwan and TCM. 171255TB. So we'll try to run that through cross reference and uh, get these shoes measured up. First thing we'll do is measure the drum. It's a 10 inch drum. And we'll measure the shoe width, which is a two and a quarter. So we need brakes that are 10 by two and a quarter. The way I like to do these, you see how it's got these four, four studs inside this backing plate. The best way to do this is to buy this whole backing plate assembly. The reason I say that, it's usually the most cost effective because by the time you buy the shoes, you buy the hardware, you buy the magnet, the labor to switch everything over, you can usually get this whole backing plate assembly, you bolt it on, four bolts, two wires, and you're done. And usually it is, ends up being cheaper in the long run and everything's new at that point. The arm, the pivots, the magnet, the springs, the wires, everything's new. They're usually a reasonable amount of money and uh, that just it seems to me to be the best way to do it. Uh, if all the rest of the drums are in this condition here where they're not too grooved up, uh, you know, we still got a good clean uh, mating surface there. Um, the guy wasn't complaining of any pulsating or anything with his trailer brakes. We're just going to reuse the drums. We're no, there's no need to uh, even machine them uh, so long as they're in, in good shape like this. So uh, I'm going to do some checking, see if we can find some parts, and we'll pick up on this job tomorrow.